My name is Langston Alston. I'm originally from Champaign, but I live in New Orleans now, and uh, I'm like a muralist and a painter. That's been something that's like uh, been kind of in flux my whole time being a muralist. Like some of my favorite projects are ones where I kind of sought them out. Uh, There's one I did on the outside of an abandoned church in New Orleans in 2017. And I learned like an interesting story about the building. Um, it was, I guess, the site of the burial of the first black officer to be killed in the Civil War, uh, who was a free man from New Orleans. And uh, he was like killed near Baton Rouge because um, New Orleans was, they had, like surrendered to the Union in the first like eight months of the war or some shit. They were never really like, on the Confederate side. So there was a lot of black Union troops being like rallied in New Orleans and then sent to fight elsewhere in the South. But this guy became really well known, uh, was like a hero in the city all through, like up until the thirties, he was like really thoroughly celebrated. And then his name kind of like fell out of the mainstream, but I kind of like heard his story. His name is Andre Caillou. I heard the story. I realized that I passed by this church where he was buried at like every day and that there was no like memorial or anything to him because people had kind of forgotten about it. And I was able to do a series of murals that were about him and his story on the front of the church, like uh, in big arches covering the doors because I managed to figure out who was like the current owner and we got to be friends and he was like telling me about the projects they had planned for the building. And like, as a kind of interim thing, he was like, well, let's figure out how we can make this memorial. Cause he, I guess, had heard the story as well. So that's like one of my favorite projects that I've ever gotten to do. And it was one that nobody would have sought me out to do it. I just kind of like lucked into a story that I felt like I wanted to tell. But then there's a lot of times where people will just like find out about me or find out about my work and then like reach out with like commissions or ideas and then you know, I work with them kind of more like a client. It just really depends. It really depends on how big it is. Like, I don't know, it, it's it's such a range because I work on so many different size murals, especially now. Uh, like, there's some that's like hard to get access to certain parts of the wall. And so those are like multi-day challenges just to figure out little like construction puzzles. And there are some that are just like really easy. They might be like really big walls, but it's just like smooth and flat. And I either have like a lift or a nice scaffold and I can do it in like two or three days. Uh, it's just, it's such a, it's such a range that it's hard to really say. Like I do a lot of murals that take one day. I do some murals that take a week. Um, I've been looking forward to some bigger projects, hopefully this summer that might take longer than that. Uh, but it just really depends. It really depends. Like if the mural is, something about the community or something about a story that I've heard that I want to be able to tell like in a mural then that's a piece that I'm going to go into with like a really clear plan of how I'm going to execute it and that plan might change while I'm working uh, based on something that I'm like figuring out while I'm painting or a conversation I have like on site you know like if I have a clear plan it's not always going to be exactly what the finished mural looks like but uh, if I go do a piece kind of like what's on your garage it might be like more of a freestyle thing where i'll just like either sketch it like right in front of the building or sketch it right onto the wall and kind of just figure it out and like when i'm doing that i'm just like listening to music and i'm like maybe like looking at like a book of like my favorite artists at the moment and like seeing things that i like that i want to emulate or ideas that i want to try and then just trying them and seeing what works and what doesn't um and for the last year or so that's been my favorite thing to do because it's a lot more cathartic than like coming up with like a really intense big plan and executing it um but i'm looking forward to getting back to more projects like that where i'm like really like thinking through all the details and really like engaging the people who are going to see the work um like people who live around it people who are working in the building like really just like figuring out who is around there that is going to encounter it a lot, seeing like what their stake in the piece is. Like, I want to do more projects like that uh, this year. I listen to so much different music. Like, uh, yeah, I listen to like a really wild array of music now. I got a truck that only has a cassette player recently. And so I've been listening to a lot of cassettes. 
um, which really like puts a hard limit on like what era of music you have to listen to. Like, you can't really listen to anything that was like made after the year 2000 in there. And even that's kind of a stretch because even though like a cassette that was supposed to be a CD does not sound very good on like 20 year old speakers. But I've been listening to like, my my girlfriend's dad made a bunch of reggae mixes like that he gave us. So I have like a ton of reggae in the truck. There's like some like Afrobeat type stuff in there. There's like, I, like then you're like country music and everything like that. Like, you know, like if it's gonna sound good on old speakers, which is like kind of a tight little pocket of music, then I listen to that and like really enjoy it when I'm driving. And then like when I'm at home, I listen to like a lot of rap mostly because that's like what I grew up listening to. That's what I like. But it's nice to have different music for different little areas that you're at. Like it's fun to be able to like get in and drive and be forced to listen to something that's like a little bit more like laid back or more like outside my comfort zone than what I would listen to while I was just like in the crib working. So I like to like mix it up a little bit. I mean, I love looking at like the work of people who I who are my my peers in Chicago. Um, there's like just so many artists that like I like interact with there and like love their work all the time. Uh, Ailey Glossy Long is tight. I love the way that she paints people. Um, David David Ho is like fantastic. Love the way that he like creates work with like layers and like collage elements. I love that stuff. And then I have like friends here whose work like really inspires me, like pushes me. My friend Devin Reynolds, he recently moved to LA, but he makes like these incredible compositions out of like, um, like attaching multiple pieces of wood and like found material together and like making these like giant paintings that are kind of like inspired by a sign painting, graffiti and all that stuff. Uh, and then I also like to look at like old artists, like Alex Katz has been a favorite for a long time since I saw a piece of his that's in the Art Institute. It's like a yellow, it's like the side of a house and it's yellow. And it's just enormous. But like the way that the colors are, is just so sick. It's like really like, it's like very arrested and very simple. So like, I love seeing stuff like that. Uh, I've been into Matisse a lot recently, like Matisse cutouts. I got a huge book of just Matisse cutouts and like being able to make artwork that says a lot with very little actual mark making is really cool to me. Um, it's something that I kind of want to learn how to do more just because I think it's like, uh, I don't know, like we get so much stimulus and also it's so easy to like overwork a piece of art and just do too much. And like seeing pieces that are just like the opposite of that is is awesome. So I don't know, those are, those are some of my like current influences, but it's always changing. There's always new people. I like have a bad habit of like buying art books all the time. Uh, so I like to like, just like run through as many artists as I can find. I do both. So my favorite thing to do is to do sketches on paper before I do something, just cause like the tactile feel is a lot more gratifying to me. Um, but then like illustration work, I do all on an iPad because it's just way easier to give somebody a finished product if you make it that way. So like the bag, I obviously drew that digitally. Um, and like anytime I'm doing an illustration, I'm probably just going to do it in Procreate because uh, that's the program that I've found to be the like easiest and most fluid drawing program that I have access to. I'm sure there are people who would say there are better ones, but I like enjoy Procreate right now. I use a lot. It's like a mix of a lot of things. Like sometimes it's like, well, it has to be done because the sun's about to go down and I'm not coming back here tomorrow. Uh, and like that. That is kind of, that's one of my favorite ways to have to finish something. Cause then it's like, you have to make big choices about how it's going to get finished, like immediately. And you don't have a lot of time to second guess what those choices are going to be. As long as that yields really cool results. Um, or other times it's like, this has to be done like tomorrow because the lift is getting taken away tomorrow. And so you're not going to be able to get up there the next day, which again is like, it forces you to make decisions about how to finish something, which I really appreciate. Um, when a piece sits in my studio for a long time, it can be pretty hard for me to decide when it's done and I'll keep messing with it for like, you know, 
like there would be like an initial burst of working on it. It's like a week or like two weeks. And then I might like come back and mess with it like over and over again until it goes somewhere. Um, so like with murals, it's easy to decide that they're done because they have to be done at a certain point. But with like individual paintings, it can be kind of tough. Uh, and I don't have like a good, uh, like hard and fast method for how I do that. I just kind of look at it and then um, sometimes it's done and sometimes it just needs to go sit in the back of the closet and like not be a part of my life for a while. And then maybe it's time that I pull it out or maybe I have to start working on it again. I mean, I live in New Orleans, so it's a huge world. You know, everybody here is an artist. There's like, it's actually, yeah, that's like a wild question because there are so many kinds of art that exist only in New Orleans and are only for this community. Like they don't, they're not made for anybody else that is outside of the city and uh, they don't, that doesn't need to change. Like it's fine. Um, like there's like a lot of, I'm in the seventh ward. So there's like Mardi Gras Indians all around, uh, which is just like a, like a, old um it's a way to celebrate the heritage of people who were able to escape slavery and live outside of the city of new orleans with like maroon communities which were normally mixed communities of uh freed slaves or escaped slaves and uh native americans and there was a ton of them around lake pontchartrain like in the swamps in the early days of the city and a lot of people in the city are descended from those people. And the way that that's celebrated here is people making like elaborate, like massive um, beaded suits and wearing them on Mardi Gras. And the suits cost thousands of dollars to make and they take all year and it takes like your whole family to make a suit. And uh, it only exists to like parade through the city on Mardi Gras. That's the only purpose that it serves. It's not for the outside world, really. It's not, for, it's like a spiritual exercise more than anything else. And um, like it, like, I don't know, it gives life like purpose and meaning and beauty in a really cool way. And it's also some of the best art that I've ever seen. And it's made like just only in New Orleans, only for New Orleans. Like people maybe I've heard of it elsewhere, but like they haven't really experienced this. You can't really experience the whole thing unless you actually like are physically present. There's like all types of art that gets made like that here. Like, I don't know, it's it's wild. There's uh, really no way to quantify like what it means because it's just like, it gives people's life meaning in general. And it also isn't like tied to capitalism. This is one of my favorite places to be an artist and to make art because there is such like a vibrant, old, um, thriving scene for people who make work, um, but don't necessarily make it for money or don't necessarily make it for like a market, right? It's not like to bring bring things to an art market. It's not necessarily like recognition from like a gallery or something like that. Or it's like, just because it's a part of history down here and it's, uh, it's just like, I don't know. It's like critical of people's lives. It's humbling, honestly. As somebody who does make art that is for sale, like it kind of puts that into perspective as being not that important compared to all this art here that is made with like a spiritual intention. Honestly, good. I just really like you guys were super receptive to the bag design when I sent in, and I had a great time painting the back of the garage. Like. It's been cool to work with you overall and easy too. Um, so I don't know, it's always nice as an artist to work with somebody who understands artists. Uh, and it seems like from working with you guys that that's the case over there.